As we approach a recession and possibly a depression, many of you have been wondering how the credit card and points of miles landscape will change. Will issuers try to entice us with new offers or will there be a reluctance to offer new products and extend more credit? Hey, how's it going everyone? It's Ernest from Trip Astute. In this video, we're gonna examine what happened during the Great Recession of 2008 and see if we can better understand how issuers and banks may respond in this economic crisis. Life has certainly changed for many of us. I know that I'm spending a lot less money nowadays, which is a result of not just staying home, but also because of the general sense of uncertainty for the future. As we continue to fight the pandemic, we know that our recovery will be more than just physical. The economic recovery is gonna be a long and painful process, and we'll all have to do our part to help our communities bounce back from the recession. One thing that many of you might be wondering is how will the credit card companies respond in a recession? It seems like there are two camps of thought. On the one hand, it seems that like companies that are heavily invested in travel or partnered with specific travel brands will try to bring customers back through special offers and promotions. For example, hotels and airlines may try to entice customers to start flying again through heavy marketing and promotions, which may include lucrative credit card offers. The other scenario is a bit grimmer. As the banks and issuers face a shrinking economy and declining projected revenue, they may try to release or limit the amount of credit that they offer. You can imagine that there is probably a large amount of credit that's being used that may not be paid back by borrowers, especially those that are struggling financially due to the crisis. The banks may want to reduce their risk exposure by cutting the amount of credit offered. I'm not an economist, so of course anything I say is speculation. But I was a points and miles nerd during the last recession, and I think if we look at the behaviors of banks and issuers during the last recession, we can gain some insights on how they'll likely respond during this economic crisis. During the Great Recession of 2008, we saw a major contraction of credit and lending as banks tried to reduce their risk exposure. That translated to many people having their credit lines cut and reduced overnight without any warning. This change was especially devastating for businesses that require revolving credit to manage their inventory and cash flow. We also saw a decline in promotional offers and bonuses during this time, as well as additional scrutiny for credit card approvals. In general, the banks and issuers were focused on reducing their debts, which often translated in less available credit to consumers. It wasn't just credit cards either. Other lending channels were tightened as well. Most famous, of course, were mortgages, which a lot of economists blamed for the recession itself. This is because lending guidelines were relaxed, allowing more people to get bigger home loans. This was fueled by investor demands for mortgage-backed securities, which then spiraled as many of these loans defaulted, causing a chain of events. So do I think that all credit card offers are gonna be pulled? No, I think we're gonna see less promotional APR offers, higher interest rates, and potentially less welcome offers as issuers look to focus on certain types of customers. Since credit card companies tend to generate revenue from various sources, it's likely that their traditional customers are probably at the highest risk for change. These are typically not people in the points of miles hobby, but rather people who use credit cards to pay their minimum balances and are essentially creating debt by carrying their balances forward. Hopefully this isn't you. The card companies make money by charging interest on this debt. While this model is profitable for the issuers and banks in the long term, it is highly risky in an environment where unemployment is rapidly rising and more people are unable to pay their bills. Like mortgages in 2008, there is a fear that people may just default on their debt which may put further strain on the issuers and banks. We in the Points and Miles community are a different kind of customer. The card companies generate income from us typically from annual fees, unused benefits, and transaction fees charged to businesses. But while there's little risk of us overusing our benefits, especially since travel is restricted, you can see that transaction fees are also likely to dwindle as people are spending less money. And if you're not gaining enough value from your annual fee card, then you're more likely to close your account, which means that the companies lose on the acquisition cost. Just like how companies can measure how much it costs to hire a new employee in terms of marketing, recruiting, and training, the same is true for acquiring a new card customer. So my guess is that current offers will likely stay put for this segment of customers, and I don't expect to see much innovation or aggressive promotions until the economy stabilizes. Retention offers will likely be strong for customers that are identified as low risk as issuers and banks hope to keep the revenue flow. For those of you new to credit or rebuilding your current credit, this might be a tough time to get a new credit card. Also, for those of you that have been aggressively applying for cards for the purpose of gaining offers, that approach and history may hurt you now as credit card companies assess each customer's credit history profile. But for the majority of you that are steady and long-term users of cards, I think you'll see that the issuers will likely wanna keep you, especially if you're someone who pays your statement balances and isn't abusing their rewards. I think the key is to try and view it from the perspective of the banks. 
In simplistic terms, if you're someone who they think can make the money, they're gonna be more likely to retain you as a customer. On the other hand, if you're someone who has a pattern of only trying to gain welcome offers, you can't blame the issuers and banks to avoid giving or maintaining your credit. So I know that might not be good news for those of you who are waiting for a big offer, but there is a silver lining. After the last recession, we saw a huge uptick in offers for customers when the economy was starting to recover. Chase in particular bounced from the recession and became a major player in the space that was traditionally dominated by American Express. They launched their Sapphire line of cards and their Ultimate Rewards program, along with a lot of marketing that seemed to appeal to millennials. For more information on Chase's rise, see our video on the topic. I cover why and how American Express and Chase dominated the travel rewards space. I personally wouldn't be surprised if we see other issuers start to seriously challenge Chase and American Express too. Issuers like US Bank and Capital One might take this opportunity to introduce new and revamped programs that compete in the premium card space. Though again, I don't think that we'll see this until things start to stabilize with the economy. And it makes sense too. If you're a bank, you probably wouldn't want to lend out more money when there's so many indicators like high unemployment, which are pointing toward a recession. One other area where I think we need to keep an eye out for is reward redemptions. We started to see more companies restrict certain types of redemptions in an effort to reduce expenses. It's not a good trend for us, but it's a reality of this hobby. This is already happening with some airline and hotel loyalty points, and I wouldn't be surprised if we start to see something similar on some flexible point programs. This is bad news if you're trying to cash out your points, though for most of us who are serious about points and miles, we are looking at the long term. We'd rather use those points at their highest value, which is typically toward travel. Lastly, I see a lot of people slamming airline, hotel, and credit card companies online. I know people are frustrated right now with having their trips canceled and in some cases not getting the response they want. However, I think we need to also keep perspective on the level of strain that's occurring in our economy. This is truly an unprecedented time and just like how most of us were unprepared for this scenario, businesses are also struggling including airlines, hotels, and credit card companies. While I'm not trying to make excuses for these companies, I think it's important to keep a bigger perspective on the situation. While we may be frustrated with the airlines and banks, I do think that they are vital businesses both economically and socially. And while we may be stuck on hold or told that we're only getting a credit rather than a refund for a flight, I encourage you to consider that these companies are trying to do their part to help with the situation. It may not be perfect, in fact it probably isn't, but I think we all are trying to get through this difficult time. The situation will get better, it's just a matter of time and effort on our part to slow the spread. What are your thoughts on the credit card landscape? Do you think that offers will be better or worse during the recession? Also, I'm curious whether you all are rethinking your card strategy and approach during this difficult time. If you're interested in applying for a new credit card and want to support our channel, please check out our card offers page on our website. It's an easy way to support us, especially if you found our content to be valuable and helpful. Also, I wanted to do a quick plug on our card consultation service. If you need any help with picking the right credit card or developing a credit card strategy, sign up for a free card consultation. You basically fill out a questionnaire and schedule a 15 minute video or audio call with me to review your recommendation. We hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If so, please give us a thumbs up and consider sharing the video with others. It may not seem like much, but it really helps us with growing our channel and community. As always, we appreciate you checking out our channel and video. I hope you all are staying safe and healthy. Until next time, travel safe and travel smart. It seems like companies that are heavily invested in travel and partnered with specific travel brands.